don't have a red light yet. Something's off. Hello, Facebook. Are you there? There we go. There we go. Hello, Facebook. Hope you're all there uh, this afternoon. I'm sorry, I know it's about four o'clock. We had a meeting this afternoon, the Board of Estimate and Apportionment that happened at two o'clock, which is our normal time, of course. And uh, the discussion was about the budget for the remainder of this year and for next year. And um, I'll just give you a little, little look at the budget. Well, wait, maybe before I do that, I'll tell you about confirmed cases first. So in the city of St. Louis, uh, this was this was first thing this morning, so probably more by the end of the day. 924 cases in St. Louis, 42 deaths. In St. Louis County, tw again, 8, 8 o'clock this morning, 2,417 cases, 96 deaths. Uh, and in Missouri, the whole state, 6,137 cases and 208 deaths. So as you can see, this does not even include St. Charles County, but uh, St. Louis City and County together have about 3,500, 3,400 cases. And so we are well over 50% just those two counties in the state of Missouri. Now, this is today the 22nd? It is. Today is the 22nd. Today's the 22nd. I'm just looking at the dates here. So this afternoon at three o'clock, Dr. Garza, who, as you know, is the incident commander for the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force, he said the number currently hospitalized today is 685 people. That is down 65 people from yesterday. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can continue to see that go down. What's been happening has been going up and down a little and up and down. So uh, that's that's very important um, that we, we hope to see those numbers can start to go down. So that's the report right now on the number of cases. I do wanna talk for just a minute about the budget. And for any of you that are really interested in these numbers, I'll try not to bore the rest of you. You know I'm an accountant, so I like these numbers. Um, the people here in the room with me are laughing at that. But some of you out there are numbers people and if you are, all of these numbers in this presentation, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, are online. And um, they were put up maybe about an hour ago. And so they're online. You can look at the presentation. You can look at the budget numbers and um, come up with questions of your own based on looking at those numbers. Friday morning at 10 o'clock is the public hearing for the budget. Of course, it's going to be virtual this year. That's never happened before. Uh, so it'll be a Zoom meeting and, and there'll be, there are instructions online uh, as to how to, uh, how to hook into that. So bottom line, this budget is extremely sobering. We are looking at $30 million down in this year that we're in, which we've only got two months left in this year, May and June, and we're looking at close to $40 million down next year. And so there's a lot of time spent in this presentation going through how we are actually going to uh, have a balanced budget, which we're required by law to have. And that's not even the worst possible budget. It's still a very bad budget. The worst that we can ever remember having in this city in terms of the amount that, that we will be, uh, that will be down. 28 million really for this third for this fourth quarter that we're in and then 40 million for next year. So for those of you that are interested in taking a look at that, go online and, and look more at, at the budget. We do have we're a front hiring freeze except for uh, uh, police officers, firefighters, uh, our public safety jobs, health department jobs. So it's not a complete freeze because some of these these positions have to continue to be filled. Um, we also are trying to maintain uh, staff to continue to provide the essential services that the city provides. I've talked about this before, but police, fire, water department, corrections, EMS, dispatchers, airport, um, 
probably missing someone here, but uh, all very important positions that we have to continue to provide. So that's uh, a very brief look at the budget. And those, those of you that are interested can spend more time on it by uh, looking at it online. I think we're also going to post the ENA meeting that had, it was about an hour and 10 minutes. Paul Payne, who's the budget director, did a very good job of walking us through all of this. So we will be posting that as well online here later this evening. So that's that's mostly what I have. Uh, do we have any questions yet, Jacob? Yes, a couple of budget questions. Okay. So over the last two or three years, um, you helped build the city's reserves mm -hmm. fund pretty high. Mm -hmm. Is that a solution to the shortfall? So the, um, the city's fund balance, we call it the reserves, is a little over, it's in here. It's about 35 million, I think is the number right now. And we've, we've built that over the last few years. And we hope not to have to dip into that. We're trying not to, here it is right here. Uh, 42 million, excuse me, not 35, 42 is what it's supposed to be at the end of this year that we're in. Now we know that it won't go up this year, uh, but we are very hopeful that uh, we don't have to dip into it too far because, you know, when I came into office, the city's fund balance was, um, I think it was 16 million three years ago. And um, so it has been built up somewhat, but I have to tell you, that's not much of a savings account for an entity that's running a billion dollar budget. And of course it also constrains us, doesn't allow us to, to have as much flexibility as we, we would like to. So we're hoping not to uh, eat into that fund balance too much. Um, another budget question, Mayor, are there things in the budget that that are non-starters for you that you think that absolutely cannot be cut, whether they're employees or crime prevention or, or there, or is everything on the table? Well, there's a lot that's on the table, but honestly, we are trying to keep people employed. Our, we have in total, about 6,600 employees in the budget, but 750, I'm looking for the exact number here. Yeah, 6,607, 750 of those jobs are vacant right now. Almost 150 of them are vacant police officer positions, which we still need to hire and want to hire police officers. So we are trying not to lay anyone off if we can uh, figure out how to do it. We are probably, um, uh, we're putting a pause on raises. Uh, one and a half percent is the normal city raise. So, um, you know, it's hard when you're cutting and you realize, you know, well, certainly we can't cut the health department right now. Certainly we can't cut the police department. We're actually up in terms of number of homicides so far this year. This, last, this is yesterday's number. I think it's still a good number, though. We had 46 homicides year to date yesterday as compared with 38 the year before on that same date. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of very serious uh, situations. So is there anything that's a, a non-starter? I mean, I don't, um, everything's on the table with a caveat that we're gonna try to continue to have enough employees to provide services for our residents. I mean, this is about humanitarian. We've already cut capital, we've cut in this pr proposed budget, we've cut ward capital, which is a very tough one. I, I hope we're gonna be able to bring some of that back, which is the capital that is spent uh, at the local level. But it's a very sobering budget. Last budget question, I think so far, what is the biggest change in this year's budget over last year's budget aside from, or maybe that is the biggest change, just the devastating impact of COVID-19? Yeah, the biggest change is, uh, having a $30 million decrease in your revenue and uh, another 40 million predicted for next year, that, that is the big change. And so then a lot of, uh, a lot of items uh, that we were going to do, such as um, it's called a PSAP, which is a public safety answering system. We, we put that on the back burner. Um, 
We have taken funds out of uh, special funds and put them into the general revenue budget to try to balance that. We've, um, we have not budgeted for any furloughs at this point. Uh, we have um, communications. We've cut the ash tree removal program. We have uh, stopped ca uh, capital expenditures for, um, uh, for, for many of the projects that, that we're going to be spent. We've also, maybe I, this is a big, we have reduced the budget for uh, the medium security institution, MSI, almost in half because we have fewer people there. And so that has gone from 16 million to 8 million. This is round numbers. And uh, we only have about um, 120 or 30 people at MSI uh, right now. Uh, it's got a capacity of uh, 1,400. And uh, so at any rate, we've reduced it in half. I don't even like numbers, Jacob. <laughs> I don't. Ian, um, so this you mentioned. Oh, we got to get rid of that. Um, Ian is watching. And Ian has asked, you just mentioned um, putting a hold on the raises. Um, are you talking about the 3% raises that you enacted for fiscal year mm -hmm. 21 for city employees? Mm -hmm. And okay. the one and a half percent. And the one, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So on hold. Mm -hmm. So on uh, COVID-19, uh, one of the questions we got was, um, our counterparts in Franklin County are beginning to relax a lot of their social distancing restrictions beginning either today or this week. So people are asking, how are people in the city of St. Louis protected if someone from outside the city where there are less restrictions come into the city? We're really not. We're a very uh, mobile, fluid society, of course. There are people who live in Franklin County who work in the city of St. Louis and, and vice versa. So, um, you know, we're all in this together, but but we're all still moving around the protection that you have. There's a couple things. One, social distancing, six feet apart. Two, wear a mask when you're out or even at work. I mean, we're, we wear masks here in the office. Um, so you just have to be very vigilant about those protections because, you know, there are, um, there are people here in our city and in St. Louis County and Illinois and Franklin County who have COVID-19, who we don't know because they're asymptomatic. So these uh, behavioral changes really need to stick. Jennifer is watching mayor uh, and Hi, Governor Jennifer. Parson has indicated that he's going to begin opening the state again on May the 4th. Mm -hmm. So our stay at home order, you will be back with further, gu further guidance by the 15th. Mm -hmm. What about that gap of, of 11 days or so? Who takes precedent if the state's open before us? Local governments. So the governor, we've talked with the governor about this. And you know, there are 114 counties in Missouri. And we're just not all alike. Uh, some counties are denser than other counties. As, as I said at the beginning, you know, the St. Louis region, we have uh, well over 50%, close to two thirds of the cases in the whole state. So we just have a different situation here. And um, you know, some, I know that there is a great desire to reopen the economy and I share that desire. I absolutely want to uh, reopen the economy just as soon as we can safely do so. And, you know, we haven't hit the peak yet, we don't think. Um, and so we need to see some decline in cases before we have a, a big opening um, of our economy. Um, Mayor, the other day, State Treasurer Scott Fitzpatrick tweeted that the state of Missouri had received a $1.2 billion wire transfer from the federal government for COVID-19 relief. Mm -hmm. Lashana Lewis is asking, when is the city of St. Louis going to see any part of that money? So the city of St. Louis's allocation is about $53 million, we've learned. And... Um, the state is supposed to give us the first 25% within 10 days, according to a uh, uh, law that the state passed just here a month ago. So hopefully uh, we'll get some of that money, maybe 12, 15 million uh, within 10 days or so. 
can we follow up and ask what we are allowed to do with it or what we what's intended to happen with it? So that's part of the issue. Um, there are no regulations for this money yet because um, they just haven't written them. Here's what we know in sort of general terms that it can be used for to reimburse us for direct COVID spending. So that would mean a lot of the PPE that we've bought. That would mean testing that we're trying to get delivery on. We've ordered and, and need to pay for. That would mean um, uh, perhaps uh, some of the efforts in the health department. So it's COVID related expenses, efforts, money that we've paid to uh, uh, procure additional beds for unhoused. All of those things we believe would be reimbursable. And so we're, but we are waiting for the regulations. We're spending this money. I think I said this before, we're spending money like we have it. Um, and we're being very frugal and very prudent about it. But um, we, we know that we have to be reimbursed for a lot of this. Uh, Jerome is watching there and he's Jerome. asking about something you actually did today. Uh, his question is where are we gonna start getting more testing for the city of St. Louis? So we have a number of test sites set up, Jerome. And this afternoon, uh, I was at the Affinia site at 4414 uh, North Florissant, which they just started doing testing to the public today. If you, if you feel that you need a test, I'm gonna give you the phone number here. It's, um, you still have to call Affinia and go through a screening process. It's 833 2777, that's 314 area code, 833-2777 is Affinia. And CARE STL Health also has a screening site at 5471 Martin Luther King. The number there is 314-367-5820. Um, and there are several, uh, several Affinia sites, a couple of CARE STL sites, um, and a couple also in the county, one just, just over the city limit line um, on page 67, 63 page, which is just, just a wee bit out of the city. So uh, you can call either one of those phone numbers, be screened, and uh, if you meet the screening requirements, get a test. Now, that being said, we still need more tests because we just can't get a big enough supply of the swabs or of the test. Uh, we are meeting with hospitals. Dr. Eccles is procuring them, trying to buy them everywhere possible, several vendors. Uh, up, up until now, they have, uh, many of them have been diverted to places that, that are, have a lot more cases, New York, East Coast particularly. So um, we still need more tests and having more testing, whether it be the diagnostic testing known as PCR, or whether it be the serology test, the test that you can give someone to figure out if they've had COVID-19, uh, both of those, we need more, more tests. This is kind of an interesting question. So after we begin to relax our restrictions and the stay at home orders begin to lift, will these testing sites still be in place? Will we still be testing the public even as the stay at home order goes away? Yes, we will. We, we have to, because what we have to do is continue to watch for, um, for blips, for increases in cases, which is often what does happen uh, when you begin lifting the stay at home order. And when you folks maybe get more casual about the social distancing uh, and washing their hands and that sort of thing. So often that does happen. And, and these sites, we do expect these sites will continue to stay open. Rachel's watching. Her question is, can I get a marriage license through the mail? I don't know, Rachel. Um, but it's the recorder of deeds office who issues marriage licenses. And I think that's Michael Butler is the recorder of deeds. We'll look up the phone number for you here during this Tommy, can you do that? Okay, Tommy's gonna look up the phone number so we can give it to you. You can call there. I know there is a process, um, but I hope you're able to get one soon. Congratulations. While we wait for the phone number, um, how is the city of St. Louis doing compared to other similar sized cities uh, in terms of 
response, outbreak number of cases, places like Kansas City, and this is the recorder's phone number. Okay, this is the number for Rachel. Is it Rachel? No. That's, yeah, it was Rachel. It was Rachel. You still watching, Rachel? I hope so. Here's the number for the recorder of deeds, 622-4610. All right. Good luck, Rachel. So ask me that question again. Oh, how are we doing as compared with other cities? Well, I think that... Um, I think we're doing fairly well. And the reason that we're doing fairly well is that we put the stay at home order in place pretty early. We put it, it went into effect uh, March 23rd. Schools closed, I wanna say it was on March 17th maybe. I might be off a few days there. Um, so we're doing fairly well in because we expected the number of cases to be much worse than the, what they've turned out to be. But the reason that they've that we've done better than we feared is that we had the stay at home order in place. And frankly, the people of St. Louis, uh, city, county, people of the region have, um, have really taken this to heart. And those that can are staying home uh, and social distancing and not mixing it up socially. Uh, of course, we know there are a lot of people still working and I, I just uh, wanna thank them uh, profusely uh, but even the folks that are still working are wearing masks, are social distancing, are taking extra precautions because we, you know, don't, this is a very contagious virus and there is no uh, preventative. There's, there's no shot that you can get to keep from getting it yet. There's no vaccine. And there's frankly, there's no medicine to, you know, make it get better. So that's, that's why this is such a serious situation. Nikki's watching what happens or what should maybe someone do if you're like at the park forest park and you see groups of more than 10 or people just not listening to social distancing well i think uh, you know if you're if you're at the park and there's a big group of people you know i think you have to carefully nicely uh be sure that you keep yourself away from them because that's ultimately who you only you can be responsible for yourself. So keep yourself away from them. If you feel that it's a situation where you can suggest that maybe, hey guys, spread out, you can do that. Um, and if not, you can call 622-4800. Uh, that won't be addressed that day, most likely. That's our Citizen Service Bureau line. And if it's a really big situation, you can call 911. So two people are asking about a court, uh, the court building, which they have been closed to the public. Mm -hmm. But apparently, it sounds like maybe some people are still getting juror summons. So, how mm -hmm. should people know if they need to report if they're still getting those in the mail? Well, that's a good question. I didn't know that juror summonses were still going out because the courthouse is closed. I would assume that the summons is for a date pretty far in the future um, because at some point the courthouse will reopen. So if the date is far in the future, you'll hear more. Uh, there is a phone number I know on that juror summons. I know that because I've gotten those summonses myself. Uh, and so you could call that number or go online and, and look that up. But I'm, I'm just making the assumption that if you got a summons now, it doesn't ask you to report for another month or something like that. I know there's usually a pretty good lead time on those. So just stay, stay tuned in, call the number on the, on the summons. Um, because right now there's no juries going on. Is there a magic number mayor when it comes to testing for how many in the city of St. Louis you'd like to see done per day to feel comfortable with lifting mm -hmm. orders and relaxing our restrictions? Uh, I don't, there's not a magic number for how many per day, but what it does need to be is anyone who, who we need to be able to be in a position to have a big enough stockpile of tests and or swabs and medical and lab capacity so that anyone who has any of the symptoms who we, who we'd like to be tested is able to be tested. Um, I, I don't know what that magic number is, but certainly it is more than we have now. We don't really have um, any tests that the city itself has. And we've been able to order some tests and get them in from a couple of different places. And we've, we've supplied the federally qualified health centers with some of those. We've worked with the hospitals. They're also procuring tests. So uh, I think it, it has to be, testing has to be prevalent enough so that we all um, know 
that if we have some symptoms, we're able to get the test. And the tests are a bit rationed right now. How is the city of St. Louis doing in terms of um, staffing more contact tracing to get a better idea of where mm -hmm. the virus could be spreading uh, mm -hmm. in the community? Our uh, health department is doing a great job at contact tracing. What that means is if you have someone who has a positive test, COVID test, that then you wanna get in touch with them or the people that are close to them to see, well, who is it that that person who's positive has come into contact with who then might be at risk of also um, uh, contracting COVID-19. And so our health department has an elaborate process for that. Uh, anyone who is being um, self-quarantined because they've had an exposure, those people uh, go online twice a day. They're given a thermometer. They take their temperature twice a day. They answer several questions. So they have to stay in touch with the health department electronically twice a day. If for some reason you don't put your information in or you miss uh, communicating with the health department, they call you on the phone, they go to see you. Uh, there's a whole uh, number of steps to follow up with those individuals who um, are, are being uh, watched, being monitored because they might have an exposure. Over the last uh, six weeks of this, there have been many, many, many people who have been uh, quarantined for 14 days or 14 uh, days since their last exposure and, and have come off of that quarantine and not ever developed symptoms. So that is a rolling group of people. Um, are people in the city getting better from COVID-19 and, mm -hmm. and recovering from this and making like a full, yes. full recovery? Yes, I mean, that is the good news. Many do, people do recover from COVID-19 um, and, and you're beginning to see some of these cases. Uh, I saw some on TV last night. And so, yes, you people do recover from COVID-19, um, but some don't, unfortunately. And a lot of people have COVID-19 and actually don't end up going into the hospital even. When you look at today's hospital numbers, what was it, 600, 685 today? Well, just in St. Louis City and County, there have been 3,500 cases close to it. Um, many of those cases did not end up being hospitalized. The ones who ended up being hospitalized though, I uh, happen to have these numbers, of the 685 that are in the hospital today, almost 200 of them are, on, uh, are in ICU and 135, 133 to be exact, are on ventilators. And um, that's a very, very serious situation. Just a few more questions. Can you close some city streets so people have more room to walk? You know, I think we've had that question before and I'm not opposing opposed to closing city streets. Most of you probably know that we have closed uh, most of the streets in the major parks. Carondelet Park has one street that's still open. Uh, the other major parks, uh, Wilmore, uh, O'Fallon, now you're going to test me here, Fairgrounds, Forest Park, there's six major parks. Uh, Forest Park has about a third of the streets that are already closed. So if you have a suggestion, uh, I'd, I'd be more than happy to hear from you on that as to what street you want closed. We're fortunate we have 109 parks in the city of St. Louis. Almost everybody in the city lives pretty close to a park and is able to walk there. They're not all close to the six major parks, but even a park that's a block or two blocks around is, is still a good place for you to walk, get outside, get some exercise. I recommend you do it today. It looks like it's going to start raining here pretty soon, and the forecast is rain for the next few days. So um, we all need to get outside for our physical health and for our mental health. Do you place where someone in a low income or underserved neighborhood community could get free PPE? So we have been providing PPE to a number of agencies such as nursing homes, that sort of, um, of congregate care facilities. Uh, just in terms of a place to get free PPE, I don't know of a place to do that. Um, I hope that once uh, once PPE, it, it has loosened up a little bit, 
But once it loosens up more, my hope is that, you know, we can hand it out to anyone who, who needs it. But the thing to do here, the most important piece of PPE is a mask and to wear the mask when you go out. And you don't have to have a fancy mask. I got a new mask yesterday from the Urban League, and I think the Urban League is going to be passing out some of these. This is very cute, isn't it? It's got the city city flag on it. I wore this today when I was at Affinia. And um, so take a T-shirt, old T-shirt, take some a bandana, a handkerchief that you have, and use that as a mask. That's the most important piece of PPE that you can have right now. And um, hand washing with soap and water. Soap and water is better than, than uh, let me see that stuff right there. Here we go. It's better than this hand sanitizer. But if you don't have soap and water, use the hand sanitizer. Okay, lighter question. What about ice cream trucks, Mary, during the stay at home order? <laughs> Sorry, no. Okay, that was fast. <laughs> Sorry, no ice cream trucks, uh, you know, so. Um, a question from uh, Alexis over at Channel 4. Hi, Alexis. Uh, she uh, is writing about the, I think this is the Wayfair tax, the e-commerce mm -hmm. use tax that's being mm -hmm. debated in Jefferson City. Mm -hmm. So the Municipal League says that uh, without it, some local municipalities and governments could be bankrupt because of how much COVID-19 is costing. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on the Wayfair tax and the impact it could have on the city of St. Louis? We have been supporting the Wayfair tax for this. I think this must be the third year. Maybe it's only the second, but it seems like for a long time. And we have been lobbying in Jeff City to pass the Wayfair tax. And so for those of you who don't know, here's what it is. When you go to the store and you buy something, you pay sales tax. But when you order something online, Sometimes you pay sales tax, sometimes you don't. Often you don't. And Wayfair, it, this case that went all the way to the Supreme Court, that's why it's called that. Wayfair says, hey, everybody has to pay sales tax. When you order it online, they call it a use tax, but uh, it's a difference. Um, and so we think it's only fair to the brick and mortar stores, the folks that are there uh, day in and day out paying rent in a building where you can go in and, and buy stuff and you got to pay your sales tax. We think it's only fair that you have to pay that when you order online. And, and the reason for that is just why should ordering online be an advantage uh, over being able to go to a store? So yes, we are in favor of that. We've been lobbying for, for that. The Municipal League um, has also been in favor of that all along. Um, so we hope it gets passed. This might be our last one. Okay. Um, what about, or has a city begun to thought about uh, swimming pools this summer, rec centers, summer programming for kids in the age of COVID-19? That is a tough one. We are thinking about it. We don't have all the answers yet. Um, there's, you know, do we open pools? We've got about another month, six weeks to figure that out. You think about it, we've only been dealing with for about six weeks. So we've learned a lot in the last six weeks and a lot has changed. So a lot will change in the next six weeks, I think. Uh, our rec programs, our summer rec programs are not happening as of right now. Um, we do think they're important. We think they're very important. Kids, young people need stuff to do. So, um, you know, our rec centers are closed right now. So, uh, there may be a way to do some of that this summer. We are also, uh, we have a program called STL Youth Jobs that um, gives young people 16 to 24 uh, jobs and uh, job skill training and that sort of thing. Last year, they hired about 800 young people. Uh, we are hoping to be able to have enough funding, maybe not quite as much as last year. So we'll probably try to call on some of the private sector to help shore that up even more. So that we continue, because we, we do know it's so important for, for young people um, to have jobs and um, to, to learn that those work skills and uh, continue. So those are all things that we are thinking through right now. I think that kind of does it for our questions today, but um, okay. you can wrap up however you like. So the wrap up is uh, go online and look at the budget for those of you that are numbers people. Um, 
the wrap up is thank you. I know this is tough and there's a lot of stress. Out there. I hear from people. Uh, I hear for you from you on Facebook. I hear from uh, from you, you know, through all kinds of, of ways, emails and all that. And I know there are a lot of you out there that are really pushing to reopen right away. And uh, we're making every effort to uh, ease what we can without causing another spike in, in COVID-19. So this is all changing really day, day to day, frankly. Um, I think you're going to see the state open back up um, May 4th, I think it is. And we'll see what that looks like. Uh, we're talking with industry groups, hotels, restaurants about how you could reopen. I think the question for you all to think about right now is would you be comfortable right now going back to uh, your your favorite restaurant, going back to uh, going out shopping for shoes or whatever it might be? Would you be comfortable uh, going into big situations? And if so, under what conditions would you still want to wear a mask? I think it's one thing to say, okay, we're going to open, reopen a bit, but it's a whole nother thing. I think the public has to be comfortable doing that. Um, and as much as I miss being able to be out and about, I th think we all have to think really very long and hard and seriously about that. Anything else? Thank you all. Bye, Facebook. Is today Wednesday? We'll okay. see you on Friday, I think. Thank you so much.